Alright, here comes pathology. So let's talk about intestinal metaplasia in gastric mucosa uh, during chronic gastritis. So uh, why do we care? And uh, let's start from one tweet. This is a case presented by Keith Xiao. It was upper endoscopy performed by my dear colleague Sergei Polishchuk. He is an endoscopist here in Kyiv and you can see some endoscopic signs of intestinal metaplasia like blue blue light crest or something like that well uh, I really advise you to go to this tweet and uh, check it out I will leave link in description so uh, when we're talking about intestinal metaplasia what is it? Um, Simply, it's when gastric mucosa uh, becomes more like intestinal type mucosa, and it's really simple. Um, you have main two main types: complete intestinal metaplasia and incomplete intestinal metaplasia. Complete means that this uh, metaplasia really, really looks like um, true intestinal mucosa. So. So you need to have some goblet cells and some absorptive cells with brush border. Uh, all these three components. Uh, if you have it, you have complete intestinal metaplasia. And maximum attention should be paid to brush border. Incomplete intestinal metaplasia. You don't have uh, absorptive cells. You have, you have goblet cells and you have some hybrid cells. They secrete some mucin, and um, I forgot to tell you this special stains which is called uh, PAS uh, and PAS with Elchon blue. So PAS stains uh, neutral mucin, which you usually see in uh, gastric valvular epithelium and uh, in these hybrid cells. It's really red and uh, Goblet cells. In goblet cells, you may find so-called sialomucin. So it's stains by Alchon blue in blue color. So if you don't have uh, such nice brush border, so uh, you are dealing with incomplete intestinal metaplasia. It's pretty similar to metaplastic mucosa, which you see in Barth esophagus. So it's the same goblet cells, which is blue and uh, some hybrid cells which closely resembling some foveolar type uh, epithelia and you really don't need special stains like PAS and Ashen Blue uh, it's optional it's just you may you may spot this metaplasia on routine stain with hematoxylin and eosin uh, but it just helps you to spot small foci of metaplasia especially on scanning modification so and you may have both you may have complete intestinal metaplasia and some foci of incomplete intestinal metaplasia in one piece all right so and why do we care uh, why pathologists well endoscopists in the first place and pathologists should recognize intestinal metaplasia well according to the guidelines of uh, ESG uh, which is called MAPS2 uh, it's from 2019. Intestinal metaplasia uh, is a risk factor and incomplete uh, intestinal metaplasia in particular is uh, even worse prognostic factor. And to be precise, there are actually three types of metaplasia. Type 1, which is complete intestinal metaplasia, type 2 and type 3. So type 2 and type 3 comprise incomplete intestinal metaplasia and the worst prognostic factor is uh, type 3 metaplasia. But the problem is to detect and to distinguish type 3 intestinal metaplasia uh, from type 2 you need some special stains uh, which called Elchon Blue plus high iron downing. It's almost never available. All pathologists they uh, recognize only complete and incomplete intestinal metaplasia. In, and in this case, incomplete intestinal metaplasia 
is the worst, worst prognostic factor. You may see the alharin, which says then incomplete intestinal metaplasia alone can uh, affect stratification and subsequent follow up. So that's why we care. And let's take a look uh, to histology of that exact case of this mucosa. So we have that histology. Histology slide and uh, it was like Sydney protocol with uh, biopsy from antrum on the right side and uh, in the middle you have incisura and um, on the left you have body. So let's see. This is routine stain, hematoxylin and eosin, not PIS, Elsham Blue. And if you look closer, you may find those areas of some glands with absorptive cells, with brush border, and goblet cells. And it's rich surface. Let's take a look on Elsham blue stain. So this is corresponding area, and you may see nice uh, blue goblet cell, goblet cells, and absorptive cells which doesn't secrete anything. And uh, BIS also can highlight a brush border. So we have in this case complete intestinal metaplasia. And uh, it is worth to saying that metaplasia causes uh, atrophy and it's called metaplastic atrophy. So atrophy, it's not only absence of glands, it's um, when glands are recapitulated by non-specific mucosa, non-specific for this place. So, for example, if you see if intestinal metaplasia replaces uh, normal gastric glands, uh, so it called metaplastic uh, atrophy. And, uh, and maybe if, uh, in case of, uh, for example, autoimmune gastritis, when uh, normal fundic glands replaced by uh, pseudopyloric glands, it also called atrophy. And atrophy can be without metaplasia, uh, then, it, then it's called non-metaplastic atrophy, and usually it's combined. So, and uh, both atrophy and intestinal metaplasia are independent prognostic factors. So, one should recognize intestinal metaplasia along with atrophy, distinguish non-metaplastic atrophy and metaplastic atrophy, and it is important to distinguish also incomplete intestinal metaplasia and complete intestinal metaplasia. Okay, so let's try to do our best. Keep going and carry a towel. Bye-bye.